Hello, Saints. For those with the eyes to see, I show you how close our gathering really is unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know according to prophecy that the nation of Israel will have a place, a temple, during the Daniel's 70th week tribulation. Now, today I saw an article that really opened my eyes to what's really going on right now, connecting this time, this time period we're in right now to this prophecy of the third temple being built. Now, we also know that once the dispensation of grace ends, our dispensation, salvation by faith alone, God will then move back to the dispensation under law, which is the faith plus works. The, the following dispensation after ours will be the dispensation of the kingdom. Now, but the foundation of that dispensation is the same as it was during in the Old Testament and the four gospels. The Mosaic law was in place and it's coming back folks. And we know this after we're gone. Now consider the video I just uploaded called 923, what happens on September 23rd, 2017. Then apply this video also to that information and we end up with an eye-opening situation taking place here uh, right now as I speak. And also consider this, from September 5th through the 11th uh, next month, the Muslims, the Christians, and the Jewish leaders are planning to open an interfaith place of worship in Jerusalem for one week in September. From Jerusalem 5 through the 11th, a Jerusalem structure currently known as the Alpert Youth Music Center will become the Amen, A-M-E-N, a place of worship for the three, this is what they call the three Abrahamic uh, faiths, you know, a passion for Jerusalem in which they will coexist temporarily under the wings of the Almighty. Now we know that the Muslim God is not our God, okay? Their father is not our father, period. The only God that exists is the God of gods, and that is our God, and it is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, who came and died and was buried and rose again on the third day for us. There's only one God, my friends. And this worship center is being created as part of an annual uh, blessing festival, which is part of the Jerusalem's Season of Culture initiative, okay? Now, we can see here, this seed of the Antichrist, one world religion is taking shape. And it's amazing just how many things are going on right now in it that seem to be taking prophetic shape, if you will, okay? Now, God's Word tells us that during Daniel's 70th week, after the dispensation of grace ends, and the dispensation of the kingdom begins, you can't have two dispensations running at the same time, folks, because you can't have two methods of salvation running at the same time either, and that's more reason, it just wouldn't make sense. You can't have one group getting saved by faith alone, and another group getting saved through faith plus works, having to endure until the end and so on. All right? this is, that's just one reason why the rapture has to take place first, to end our dispensation and begin the nation of Israel's dispensation all over again, <coughs> running through the seven years for Daniel's people. Now, let's look at some scripture concerning the third temple first, okay? Then I want to share with you uh, some news and uh, that I saw today concerning how close we really are to building that third temple. In Daniel 9.27, And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause a sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the over overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. In Matthew 24, 15, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. In Revelation chapter 11, uh, yeah, 11. And there was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot for forty and two months. Daniel chapter 9. Uh, verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, who is thy people here? The Jews, the nation of Israel, and upon thy holy city, 
which is Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off for not for himself. And the people of the Prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation and that determined shall be poured out uh, poured upon the desolate second Thessalonians 2 3 and 4 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. That's the apostasy that will take place when God pours out the delusion and forces them to believe in the Antichrist during the first part of Daniel's 70th week. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. In Revelation 1, 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, this first picture I want to show you, okay? Uh, Rabbi Baruch Kahan, 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 I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, K-A-H-A-N-E, shown here offering the Omer, the barley sacrifice to God, in the heart of the old city of Jerusalem has been appointed as high priest by the nascent Sanhedrin. This is a significant step which was recently taken towards reinstating the temple service when the nascent Sanhedrin selected Rabbi Baruch Kahin as the next Kohen Gadol, the high priest. The selection was made as a precaution for Yom Kippur. Now, if the political conditions should change, allowing the Jews access to the Temple Mount, they will be required by Torah law to bring the sacrifices. Rabbi Kahin is confident that if that should happen, Temple service could begin in less than one week. Now, Rabbi Kahin is a prominent scholar, knowledgeable in the complicated laws pertaining to the subject of the Temple service. He's part of the Halakha Barua Institute, established by Rabbi Avraham Isaac HaKohen Cook, <laughs> the, the, the first chief rabbi of Israel, which deals with the elucidation of Jewish law from its Talmudic sources, the oral law and commentaries. And he has, he's played a prominent role in the reenactments of the temple services performed to date. Now this year, has already seen much temple-oriented activity. The Temple Institute has created a registry of Kohanim, established a school for educating men of the priestly class in the details of the temple service, and performed reenactments on all the holidays, including the especially significant Passover sacrifice. Now this second picture here is the Kohanim carrying the lambs in a reenactment of the temple Passover sacrifice. Rabbi Hillel Wise, spokesman for the nascent Sanhedrin, explained to Breaking Israel News the necessity for choosing a high priest even in the absence of a temple. Now here he says, quote, We do not need a miraculous occurrence like the sudden appearance of a temple descending from heaven onto the Temple Mount to make this decision relevant, explained Rabbi Wise. The only obstacle preventing the temple service today is the political issue. If that should suddenly change, as it very well could, we would be required to begin the temple service immediately. It is therefore necessary that we have a candidate prepared to fill the role 
of the high priest, especially now that we have the Kohanim prepared to serve in the temple. Now this Rabbi Yisrael, Yisrael Ariel, founder and the head of the Temple Institute, is a member of the Sanhedrin but did not rule in this decision. He told Breaking News Israel that it was necessary for the Sanhedrin to choose a Kohen Gadol. Quote, this is certainly something we should do now as religious Jews, choosing a high priest and all the preparations for the temple service are mitzvot, the commandments that are inc incumbent upon us according to the Torah, said Rabbi Ariel. Quote, it is not a matter of opinion. It is written explicitly in the Torah and just like any of the other mitzvot written in the Torah, we have to choose a Kohan Godel and make all the preparations regardless of whether there is a temple standing right now. Now, do you agree the Jewish people have a biblical right to Jerusalem? Well, Rabbi Kohen was reluctant to discuss the Sanhedrin's decision. Quote, this may not be the time to choose a Kohen Godel. There is no sacrifices required. End quote. He said to Breaking Israel News. However, he added that that could change overnight. In any case, it's clear that we need to be prepared to prepare the priests to have everything ready. Now, when I asked how long it would take to begin sacrifices if it suddenly became permissible, he considered carefully before answering, and he said if the government decided to permit it, it would only take a few weeks to make preparations, even uh, to do the Yom Kippur service, he said. The structures can be temporary and prepared almost overnight. The biggest obstacle is educating the Kohanim, which we are taking care of already. Once the priests are thoroughly educated, choosing a Kohen Godal is and teaching him what he needs to know for the Yom Kippur service is relatively simple and will take one week. The temple service performed by the Kohen Godal is very demanding, but for an educated Kohen, it is not overly difficult to learn the service as the Kohan Godel. Now this third picture is the altar built by the Temple Institute to be used in service in the rebuilt the third Jewish temple. Okay. Now Rabbi Wise explained the importance of advancing temple initiatives even when it seems that reinstituting the temple service is not a matter of urgency. Quote, there are many Torah laws that are not sacrifices or temple services, but are nonetheless dependent on the temple and Kohanim. We recently reenacted the Omer wave offering, which has ramifications for when Israel can eat the current wheat harvest. In addition, we also reenacted the giving of the shoulder to cheeks and stomach of an ox to the priest. <clears throat> and this shall be the Kohanim's uh, due from the people. For from them that you know they offer a sacrifice whether it be an ox or a sheep that they shall give unto the Kohan the shoulder the two cheeks and the maw in Deuteronomy 18:3 you can see that quote this is not only part of the sacrifice but it also an issue of kashrut kosher laws which we should be doing today explain Rabbi Wise instead it is treated in a rather shabby symbolic manner. While it seems unlikely that the political climate could shift within a few weeks to the extent necessary for the Jews to establish an altar and begin preparing sacrifices on the mount in time for Yom Kippur, the world can rest assured that as these moments uh, that change should occur, the Jewish people are prepared. Now for those of you with eyes to see, take a good look. And for those of you with the ears to hear, listen closely. Our time is coming to an end, saints. Again, if you haven't seen the September 23rd, 2017 video I just put up yesterday or the day before, watch it. Take a, a good look at what's coming for the nation of Israel just a year from now. Then add to that the information I've just shared to you here in this video. Add the two together and it spells out imminency, okay? Saints, it's time to shift gears in your witnessing strategies. It's time to really get motivated get moving plant as many seeds of salvation as you possibly can in the little time we have left 
Planting seeds of salvation does not involve getting into arguments with people or whether or not God exists, okay? You don't need to be arguing about that. Planting seeds of salvation doesn't involve arguing over when the rapture is going to take place either. Planting seeds of salvation is simply telling another person who Jesus Christ is, what Jesus Christ did for them, and how to get saved according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Then you move on to the next. Don't get bogged down with all the world's methods of rejection, okay? Don't fall for it. Don't get, don't feed into it one bit. Plant the seed and move on. That's it. And also be in prayer more now than ever before. And keep your armor on at all times. The, the battle is about to heat up like you've never seen, saints. They're already coming at us to control the internet. And the first thing they're going to control is the name of Jesus Christ. And you know it. So, grace and peace in Christ Jesus be with all of you. I can't wait to meet you guys at our wonderful gathering very soon, very soon. And I'll see you on my next video. Hello saints and my uh, future saints out there by the grace of our Lord God. Uh, today I'd like to share something very, very interesting with you. But before we get into that, that interesting information, I need to let you know that in no way am I making any predictions or setting dates or am I claiming I'm a prophet or anything like that. Okay, let's not get crazy. Uh, this is uh, this is just for informational purposes only um, and you know I'll let you decide and through your discernment and right division and also the understanding of dispensations I let you come to your own conclusions about this information that I'm about to share with you all right now I've done the work to collect all this information and I present it to you exactly as I found it I've been sitting on this information now for over a year, actually, and I've been conversing back and forth with the uh, with the person that I found this information through, and uh, he's written a couple books about this, and I'm going to share with you the links and everything later on. It's going to be in my description box. I'm going to be sharing with you uh, probably three or four different links, but you'll understand by the time we're done. Anyway, now we know by rightly dividing and with the understanding of dispensations how God is dealing with the nation of Israel okay and how he's dealing with them differently than the body of Christ and one way he deals differently between Israel and the church the Bible says that the body of Christ shall live by faith alone in 2nd Corinthians 5 7 it says Paul writes for we walk by faith not by sight 
in 1 Corinthians 1.22, it says, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Now, the Jews were known for always asking for a sign. They, they had a hard time believing by faith alone. Uh, they had to have something tangible to see and follow. And, you know, such as the law of Moses being one example, and they had to live by having a constant direction, okay? And it became their downfall. And when the Messiah finally showed up for them, they didn't have enough faith. And all they wanted to do was see his signs. They wanted him to perform signs all the time. Matthew 16, uh, verses 1 through 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be there shall no sign be given unto thee but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So we see a big difference here between the nation of Israel and the body of Christ. One living by sight and signs, and the other living by faith. So it's safe to assume that the nation of Israel will continue to require signs even into the 70th week of Daniel during the tribulation Jacob's trouble and one of these signs we happen to see in Revelation 12 now we know by understanding dispensations that Revelation 12 is during the time of Daniel's 70th week and it is solely for the nation of Israel this is after the body of Christ has been removed caught up Harpazod, raptured unto our Lord Jesus. Okay, so in order to for me to set the stage here, so to speak, we need to look at a couple different passages in God's Word. Okay, we read in Genesis 1, 4-19, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the earth and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Hallelujah. Job 38, 30 to 33. Canst thou bind the sweet influences of Pallades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maseroth in his season? Or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons, knowing thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof? in the earth now here God is sort of putting Job in his place okay Job was complaining and God is uh, asking him these questions making Job seem like the little small little ant that he really was compared to God now Amos in 5 8 seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. In Psalm 8, 3, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Psalm 147, 4, He telleth the number of the stars, he calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power his understanding is infinite in Micah 5 2 to 3 but thou Bethlehem Ephrata though thou be little among the thousands of Judah yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is 
to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. In Revelation 12, verse 2, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in pain in birth, and pained to be delivered. So, in Genesis, we see the reason why God created the stars, the planets, the sun, and the moon. And he said they were for signs and seasons. Now, the word seasons here does not mean summer, winter, fall, and spring, okay? The, uh, the translation here relates to the timing of their feasts, okay? So they would know when to celebrate Passover and Tabernacles and Rosh Hashanah and all those good celebrations that they have. And the signs here are in relation to prophecies and symbols of events for future events and so on. Now in Micah, we see a prophecy that the Messiah would give them up. Okay, them here being the nation of Israel until a time when she, the woman, the sign would be in travail or birth pains, more commonly said, you know, about to give birth. Now, in Revelation, we see John talking about the actual sign mentioned in the prophecy of Micah, a sign in the heaven, the woman crowned with 12 stars, being uh, the 12 being the 12 tribes of Israel. She was giving birth with the moon at her feet and the sun at her back and so on. Okay, And the other passages, we see how meticulous God is about the stars and everything he created in the, in the second heaven. And how he set them, naming each and every one of the billions and billions of stars out there. He calls each and every one of them by name, okay? So he didn't just place these things up there just because he was bored one day. They're there for a reason. If he took the time to establish all the stars and all the planets and all the constellations and all those beautiful things up there. And he even made them in, into the constellations and he named all the stars. And he took, he took the time to do this, folks. Like I said, he didn't do it, all that stuff because he was bored one day. He did it for a reason, and we see that for signs and for seasons. Okay, now, before I forget, if you haven't seen the documentary, um, uh, it's by a lawyer, an attorney. What's his name? Uh, Larson, I think. Yeah, Jim Larson. The documentary is called The Bethlehem Star. And I, I believe that's the name of his uh, website, the Bethlehemstar.org or .net. Not sure, but it's Jim Larson, okay. And if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend you watch it because it, it's awesome. I mean, the information he found is astounding, and it has to do with the sign of the star of Bethlehem and the three wise men, okay. Specifically, what the three wise men saw, and uh, you know they followed it for hundreds and hundreds of miles. And it led them to our Lord Jesus. And when they found him, he was a toddler. He, he was about two, in between two and three years old, okay? And they gave him gifts and so on. The, the frankincense, uh, myrrh and, and that. And you know the story, all right? Now, if you thought the three my, the wise men found Jesus the day after he was born in and in they saw him in a small manger and so on, then you've believed the myth and probably watched too many movies. Because uh, that's not what happened. I suggest you go back and read the story. And you'll see with careful attention that when the three wise men came to tell Herod. They, w they went to ask Herod. They, they said, where is our king that was born? Uh, you know, the, the king. And Herod had, didn't know anything about it. Well, it was two years later that, uh, you know, that Herod went out to kill all the children under the age of two years old okay that's why he said kill all male children under the age of two because Jesus would have been around that age around two years old during that time all right when the wise men finally got to him and visited and then they left quickly to hide from Herod so they wouldn't be killed because they lied to him well anyway I digress but back to our interesting sign 
in 2017 next year almost exactly a year from now a year and a month on September 23rd the actual sign of Revelation 12 will be seen okay now hear me out I'll prove it to you and it's gonna be seen from Jerusalem which is very important because we know who needs the sign okay this isn't for us folks the nation of Israel requires a sign and this is the mother of signs now let me explain a few things here the 12 stars include three planets and the reason is the planets were known to the Jews as being wandering stars okay so they're included in this sign as well and I'll show you that also I've gone back about 4,000 years from 2017 and a thousand years into the future on the program Stellarium which I'll show you in a minute and there is no such sign in the past or in the future none zip zilch this is the only time this happens folks okay now you know what let me see if I can pull it up here for a second uh, I'll pull it up on the screen so I can show you what we're talking about all right Here's the program Stellarium, okay? It's free, and you can go online, search it. I'll leave a uh, link to that as well in the description box so you can download it and take a look at this for yourself. Now, here we see Virgo, okay? Uh, the Virgin, all right? Here's Leo, the Lion, and I have it on the date 2016 8-10, and uh, I wanted you to see this. Today's the 28th. 27 28th now yesterday we had something interesting last night happen there was a conjunction between Jupiter and Venus and I'm gonna show you that okay now here's the tenth we're gonna go 11 12 13 all the way up to last night there it is there's Venus and Jupiter right here and 25 26 27 last night there's the conjunction that's what everybody saw last night well actually it was hard to see because it it stays underneath the uh, below the horizon and it's you can't really see it because it's daytime up here anyway where I'm at I couldn't see it but fortunately we have this program and we can see it now now the reason why we're looking at this we need to take a look at next year so we're gonna go to actually we're gonna start this year in the month of this is October 27th here's Jupiter okay it's coming in it's coming in right here September 27th now watch it keep your eye on Jupiter Jupiter is known as the king planet okay the Messiah all right notice what it does here it goes in we're in November and November 20th right around there it goes into the womb of the Virgin now for you ladies out there who have had children how many months does your little baby stay inside of your tummy right nine months right okay or nine and a half months whatever but here we go we're in February okay notice that Jupiter is inside we're February March April oh wait so anyway from uh, October let's go back we'll go back till it first hits okay so we're in October November 18 right around the 20th so from November 20th let's say November December January February March April May June July August September Okay, that's nine months, right? All right. Now, here is the date of the sign next year. Here's 920, okay? The actual date of the sign would be on 923, but I want to show you as this goes on here. So we'll start a little bit early. In the beginning of the month, all right? September, uh, August 31st, and we'll move along September 2nd. Now, watch Jupiter. Jupiter slowly exiting the womb. And here comes the Sun there's the moon and we're on the 23rd the exact date of this sign the moon is at her feet 
okay now let's go back and read Revelation real quick uh, let's see if I can get it up here I just want to read this so as we look at it so that way you can see exactly what I'm talking about here uh, Matthew sorry about that folks I'll get to it uh, it's coming okay there it is and there appeared a great wonder in the heaven a woman clothed in the sun here's the sun okay she's clothed in the sun the moon at her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars notice without Mercury Mars and Venus there's only nine stars normally in the constellation of Leo and Leo is this symbol for Jesus Christ okay the Messiah Regulus happens to be uh, also kingship but anyway normally there's nine stars crowning her okay but on this specific date and this date only all these things line up she's crowned with 12 stars here one two like I said planets are called wandering stars to the Jews okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve on this specific date now if you're good at math statistically speaking all of these different events taking place at the same time is one in billions okay billions now like I said I've gone back four thousand years I mean I could have went further but what's the point and I went into the future a thousand years and there's nothing like this not even close my friends not even close okay so we have she's crowned with 12 stars clothed in the Sun the moon at her feet and she's giving birth to Jupiter all right and that happens on the 23rd of September in 2017 this is a literal and very visible sign in the heavens folks this isn't a gimmick okay now look at the woman here she's got the 12 stars symbolizing the 12 tribes she's got the moon at her feet she's got the Sun at her back and she's giving birth to Jupiter which is known to symbolize the king planet the Messiah of Christ okay now let me say this again a lot of people think that this sign happens to be the birth of Christ because the first part of Revelation 12 talks about the Messiah uh, the uh, it talks about Satan and the 200 angels being thrown out onto the earth and all that but what is Revelation 12 is a bigger picture okay it's not talking about just one event it's talking about the entire scope of events over the past 2,000 years all right so it's not the birth okay and that's why I mentioned the documentary by Jim Larson called Bethlehem start because he actually shows you what the sign was when our Savior was born and it's nowhere close to this sign here in Revelation 12 not even close okay in fact the sign of Jesus's birth doesn't involve the constellation of Virgo at all it involves the constellation of Leo this one up here okay and uh, the line the the Regulus uh, this Regulus right here and the king planet again Jupiter so please watch the documentary it's very informative and uh, you know also let me mention here now that the worshiping of constellations and all these things and stars is called astrology okay and it's blasphemy all right it's idolatry and just like the horoscopes and all that mess that's all satanic to the core okay what we're doing here is looking at God's writing in the stars this is astronomy and we read in Genesis that God put these things here specifically for signs and who needs signs friends the Jews and we see those signs here in Micah and we 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 see it here in Revelation and also it's what the three wise men were looking at when they went to find and worship their their king of kings the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ how do you think they knew about the birth of Christ they were studying the astronomy and the constellations and all these planets and stars 
for a thousands of years okay this was passed down through generations that Christ would be born and there would be a sign in the heavens and they knew about this sign and that's what they saw and that's what led them to go see baby Jesus okay so okay now this Revelation 12 sign happens exactly two days after the Feast of Trumpets Rosh Hashanah okay Rosh Hashanah the Feast of Trumpets starts on the I believe it's either the 20th or 21st there's two days there okay 20 or 20 but it's two days before the 23rd before this sign takes place all right now get this seven years later falls on 2024 now 25 and 100 25 and 20 days after this sign here up here okay lands in the fall feasts exactly when the second coming is prophesied to happen now there's a lot more information regarding the specific date okay about the beginning and the ending of all these things all right and uh, there's just not enough time to go through it in this video because I could sit here and make a four-hour video going through all the details but fortunately I'm gonna leave you a link and you can take a look at this all to yourself okay now um, you know I again I, I just I wanted to get this information out there like I said you use discernment and do with it what you will okay now something else very interesting happens in the fall of 2024 and it has to do with the king planet and where it ends up okay and where it ends up at during this time period on the 9th of Av in 2024 the king planet Jupiter is found between the horns of Taurus okay and I would pull it up pull it up for you but I don't have oh wait maybe I do I might have the picture to show you here let me see if I can pull it up for you uh, yeah let's try that there it is okay this is what I was talking about this is the sign that happens in 2024 in the fall okay this is where Jupiter ends up in between the horns of Taurus the bull okay and what it, the common Hebrew name for Taurus is sure s h u r which can mean both coming and ruling or in other words the coming judge okay and this happens exactly 25 and 120 days after 23rd September 2017 in other words this happens exactly seven years the time of Daniel's 70th week exactly to the day to the day the exact day okay now in short Taurus represents the coming governor Jesus Christ his and his congregation okay so we see both the beginning sign and the ending sign exactly the right amount of days according to Daniel 9 and Revelation now at the second coming at the end of Daniel's 70th uh, 70th week Jesus tells us what's going to take place in Matthew 24 29 and 30 immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the Sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and the then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory so the Jews will get their sign okay that they that they need to believe plenty of them will be given uh, to them not only the heavens but also on the earth they, they'll have the Antichrist the abomination of desolation the falling away the apostasy the seal signs and so many signs they're gonna get so what does this mean for us what does this mean for us the Saints the church well I believe this Revelation 12 sign is a sign to the Jews that their time has come God is about to close the dispensation of grace and move back to the dispensation under the Mosaic law called the dispensation of the kingdom where once once again they'll have to perform works plus faith and endure until the end of the seven years to get into the earthly kingdom the kingdom of heaven on earth and if they get martyred before then 
then they'll be raised at the end okay the Jews are about to wake up friends so pray for them pray for their safety pray for their salvation and beloved we're about to go home very soon at any moment our Lord is gonna call us unto his glory then we'll be taken into our heavenly program you know considering that the Feast of Trumpets is just two days prior to this sign of Revelation 12 here and that is very significant folks you know that reminds me there's another sign just two days before the Revelation sign like I said okay uh, and it happens on the Feast of Trumpets and you really 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 need to see this one this could be huge but you decide for yourself I'll leave you a link for it in the description box and uh, I'll call it the sign two days before the Revelation 12 sign with a link for you okay and take a look at that one it's gonna have something to do with Enoch's pillar and Orion alright and the tabernacle that God places as a sign in Egypt alright it's very interesting take a look at that now what we should be doing at this time is planting seeds like crazy okay we should be sharing the salvation message with everyone around us don't hesitate saints the time is now okay the rapture could and will happen soon we just don't know the exact time but I'm pretty sure we're about to go home amen and like I said at the start of this video this isn't a prophecy of mine this isn't prediction okay this is a sign that is actually coming it will be visible you will be able to see this sign if you really want to see it with your own two eyes and there's no guessing about this there's no speculation if it will be here on the 23rd of September because it will be here on the 23rd of September of 2017 guaranteed 100 percent unless the Lord God changes his mind and decides to move the entire constellation of Virgo on the other side or you know anything can happen if the Lord wills it okay so this is a fact Saints this is for real and hopefully we won't even be here to see it okay I don't think we will personally but the nation of Israel will be here to see it because this sign is for the nation of Israel they need a sign all right and we know that so anyway I hope this was interesting and I hope it's you know food for thought for you and I, I will leave several links in the description box go ahead and take take a good look at him and I'll even put a link in there uh, for the free download of Stellarium so you can play around with this thing here it's pretty interesting I mean you can do all kinds of stuff with this and I like it I've had it for a couple of years now and uh, it works good on the computer it hasn't crashed or anything like that so I'll leave you a link for that plus the other articles that I mentioned go ahead and do your own research um, again I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen on that date I don't think it on I, I really don't think it will because that date happens to be there happens to be that very sign for the nation of Israel and not for the church okay we know that this sign is not for us I mean we're made aware of this sign and I praise our Lord God that he opened my eyes and he gave me an opportunity to come across this information and I and I and I thank Lord God for uh, you know saving and making the men that that came up with this uh, you know all this information about this sign and wrote articles and even wrote a couple books and uh, I'm gonna leave his name in the links also to, to give him due credit for all this information and uh, you could probably get a hold of him as well if you want more information I mean the guy is a genius when it comes to math and date and all this information here he knows what he's talking about my friends that's a fact so with that said I love you all Saints Go out there, plant some seeds today. We don't have much time left. And if you got anything out of this video, you'll understand that our time left on this earth is very, very short, my friends. So if you have any friends out there that aren't saved, today's the day, right? I love you all. Peace and grace. 
in Christ Jesus to all of you and your families. I hope you had a great, a great weekend, and I'll see you on my next video.